Hello, good morning, everybody, and happy Friday to you. Welcome to another episode of the Digital Discovery Show, a show born out of our love of taking businesses across the, uh, the country and beyond, discover their digital A game and go through a wonderful transformation where digital capability and empowerment takes their business to that, that next level. And speaking of next level, we have next level guests again joining us this week that uh, none other than also doing great things in the world of digital, in the world of helping small business, and also specifically in the world of tourism, uh, as this show is brought to you by Tourism Tribe and Navi Digital. My name is Desfina Kratius. I'm the Chief Navigator here at Navi and Tourism Tribe. And without further ado we'll get straight into inviting and bringing on our special guest first up we have amanda cruz and karen made it on safely and beautifully welcome to tourism tribe and navi digital discovery show so wonderful to have you both here oh, it's a pleasure so Absolutely just to give everybody a little background, so we've got Amanda Cruz. She is the Managing Director of Success Matrix. So I'll go and just give everybody a little bit of background about you, Amanda, if that's okay. She thrives when inspiring tourism operators and destinations by providing a fresh perspective with her engaging and empathetic style of coaching, helping them navigate the forever changing roller coaster of the tourism landscape. Ain't that the truth? So today is all about managing growth through change and we have an expert that is helping many, many businesses do just that. Welcome, Amanda. And then our other dear friend, Karen, that is uh, is so loved for both Success Matrix and the Tribers. Uh, Amanda is passionate about the hospitality and tourism industry, having been involved in welcoming and serving guests for more than 35 years. Her background is in marketing and sales, in hotels, events and attractions, both internationally and in Australia, and has formal degrees in hotel restaurant management business and marketing along with her hubby michael they have owned the management rights for dorchester on the beach on the gold coast for the past six years and are busy 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 and carefully 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 rebuilding their business so we're going to learn a lot and be inspired a lot by our guests today welcome again to you karen thank you for joining us it's a pleasure thank you now, we're going to start with you, Amanda, just about your journey in Success Matrix, how you are navigating this change within your own business and, and extending that in helping your clients. How, you, how are you most, most serving clients right now navigate their changes, particularly in tourism when we're dealing with businesses that are heavily focused on international markets or domestic markets, and that's gone for the next little while. If you could share a little bit about that with us, it would be amazing. That's fine. So, yes, it has been a big change for everybody, obviously, and it's a, a different story with everybody across Australia and how, they're, how they have, you know, been affected by COVID and even how the rebound, you know, is coming through for some versus others. You know, some are, are thriving and some are still very much in very delicate, fragile states, um, you know, in, in different areas of Australia. So specifically for me, my focus um, predominantly is Queensland and has been for many years. And I've had the pleasure um, the last few years of doing a lot of work um, with Queensland operators, uh, looking especially at their international marketing. So I've been working heavily in creating new revenue pipelines for businesses to do the international market. So clearly that's obviously changed in the last um, little while. And luckily for me, my businesses that we've had over the many years have also had a very big domestic um, customer base, especially our accommodation business across Queensland. Uh, we had 22 properties in our group and uh, that was very much a domestic um, properties. So I've been able to assist operators with my background to help them through coaching and mentoring to work out what 
could do for their business to pivot from international, pivot from other states, interstate, and, and work on that Queensland market. And I've been very blessed to be um, part of the coaching program with my lovely partners, Tourism Tribe and Krista Hurwitz Marketing, to do the QTIC um, coaching program. So that's what I've been busy doing with hundreds of operators across Queensland in looking at, at pivoting um, that lovely word that we're, we're using um, to yeah. new customers and uh, be able to work in different markets. Excellent. And and also you, you mentioned earlier you've had a lot of experience in managing your op own operations and, and yeah. have a strong background operationally as well in your background. How has that been? I, I'd imagine that's very, very helpful also to be able to pull on that experience yourself. Had you ever seen that, ha, ha, had you ever experienced anything like this in your business to have to shift a whole completely market during your time? Nothing like this, I have to admit, yeah. and I don't think any of us have, thank God, and, and hopefully never yes. again. But, yes, um, it is, I've said to a few people, I think even Karen's heard me say this over time, um, I actually feel quite blessed to be older for the first time in my life <laughs> because <laughs> I am certainly pulling on skill sets from a time before the internet, um, from a time when we had the airline pilot um, strikes where we lost all of our um, fly market in, um, and I was in North Queensland at the time, which, you know, is, is very similar to what we're going through now with no flights, you know, and, and where do we get that market? And I was also very much um, heavily involved within the whole of Queensland marketing at the time of the ANSAC collapse. Um, so I've, I have had some of those big hits. And I've lived in destinations and had businesses in destinations that have those lovely things called cyclones and, and floods that um, come through. So uh, I have had on many occasions have to do a quick jump into just that local market or just that 400-kilometre drive market and, uh, and look at the, you know, um, have to find those customers at that time that you can only work with. So how, you know, working with that. And that's something that I've been able to really be able to share. Not only that, but even financial sides of things where, you know, mm. one, one of the sessions the other day was purely looking at, at accounting models and, um, and trying to look at, you know, different financial ways to, you know, manage that finance through crisis. So, uh, so yes, having been through that as a business owner has done certainly to help others. Excellent. And that's an important note that you've made there, particularly for our industry friends, that distribution is certainly the borders may have closed and the visitors may not be coming now, but but your those relationships that you have had, the existing relationship, that is not dead. There are still opportunities to distribute your product in other that's ways. That's right, uh, exactly. And that's uh, why this is such a great, we, we've worked so well together over over the years. Now, if I could bring Karen back uh, and to share your story, tell us a little bit about, you know, where uh, your journey uh, and how expert guidance and working with someone like Amanda, how is that, you know, tell us a little bit about how you've been impacted at the moment. Sure. A little bit about the journey this past year. So we were on track to have our best year ever. And then on the 31st of March, I started having to refund $450,000 worth of forward bookings and deposits. And uh, then um, we had to actually close the business down for uh, April, May, and most of June because we were a holiday let and we are not a permanent. And uh, then uh, we... I had to figure out what to do to get some money into some of these apartments. So we turned a few of them into short-term lets, uh, two weeks at a time for essential workers. And then most of our other apartments wanted to just stay closed for the immediate period during that uh, May, June time. Then we also had to hibernate all our loans and speak with our bank and uh, go on job seeker and job keeper. So that's the reality of what happened on the ground for us, and we were running on our best year ever. Um, our biggest pain point it was what to do with an empty building. So we brought forward all of our corporate body corporate maintenance and things that needed to be done that was scheduled for later in the year to uh, keep the building at least moving forward. Now, one of the best things I did do was sign up with Tourism Tribe for the upskilling during lockdown program, it was a 12-week program where 
I was taught how to safeguard my passwords, how to use Zoom, how to feel a little bit more comfortable on videos and so forth, to optimize my website, um, to understand a little bit more about Facebook and Instagram, um, and uh, to help just think about how was I going to take this, marketing, this business forward in marketing, and how was I going to segment it and drive it forward as the markets were changing. Now, it was a very helpful program that has allowed me now to move forward with Amanda in the QTIC program um, as my one-on-one -on -one mentor. And uh, Amanda has taken me forward in helping me to refresh my brand a little bit, retarget slightly. We are a family market, so I know um, in the past I didn't have enough family market photos and images in place. Um, I've also been working with Amanda to develop a, a better database uh, to co-market with colleagues like uh, um, different tour companies, um, different regions. Um, I'm also turning, uh, she's also encouraging me to do contra deals and do competitions and just to really expand my business development. I'm working, for example, on the Gold Coast with a tour company called Aqueduct with Sarah and her company and we're going to package and we're going to take these packages to destination Gold Coast to inbound operators and to other areas in the region. Queensland is our is our market right now because it's and we're marketing to the four hour market. And uh, then now ACT is coming in. So with that, with the skills that I've learned through Amanda and through Tourism Tribe, I'm putting up ads on our Facebook sites. I'm learning, I'm putting on Instagram ads and putting up new photos. Now I'll be honest with you, the biggest challenge for me at the time um, is I'm not a digital person or a computer person, so I just needed to learn the basics. And I've managed to do that. But if you um, are a digital person, learn the basics and move forward and just really do it. For me, I'm moving forward and I'm also bringing a specialist along with me. That's amazing. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Karen. And that's the reality of, you know, I, I love what you've shared straight off the bat. You were, you were geared up to have the best year ever. You know, I think there's a lot of people kind of bring in 2020. You're seeing the trajectory. You've done all the right things up until now. We're set for 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 greatness this year, and then you're looking at the bottom line with the four hundred and fifty thousand dollar loss, and that is the that is the reality. It's great to see that you. Uh, I think you. It's. It's, a, it's fantastic to see and particularly, and I'll just, uh, if we beam uh, Amanda back in particularly, and I think whether, now you guys, you're based on the Gold Coast, Karen, and you're both in Queensland. There's an incredible program now with the QTIC uh, program that is available to Queensland businesses. But I think for anyone that's listening and tuning in from other parts of the country many of our you know whether it's your local chamber if you're if you're coming to us and not in the industry or another state there's a lot of support out there for businesses and you look at an example of how Karen's been able to tap into that support and see the results of that that and the combination and I love this it's a perfect if it's like a perfect marriage that with digital but also with good practicing foundational trade relations and marketing opportunities and having a coach and someone really just to cheer you, you know, cheer you on, right? I think that's something that I see a lot of benefit in what you've uh, what you've shared. So that is that is such good stuff that although it's challenging, what I took away from what you've shared to Karen is that it's challenging. So, you know, if you've come in as a novice, whether, you know, even thinking, okay, I'm in the business of tourism, but the working in trade or how would I even do a contra deal? These are other more cost-effective, low-cost opportunities that you can do over a coffee and a handshake or digitally over an exchange of a Facebook post. So there are many different ways that you can look at that same model. So I hope people are kind of getting some aha moments and getting some inspiration from that. 
Amanda, for you, and we've been working together for some time, and this Karen has been a delightful client. Um, I think we can move on from client and just say a, a dear friend of both of ours now uh, that we've been able to really work with and see the action take, you know, as it's not just sharing the knowledge but see you apply it and then see results come at the end. What are some other examples that you've seen of businesses who have been able to redefine themselves and attract that localized? I love what you said before. I haven't quite heard that for, what did you say, like the 4K? 400 kilometre radius. Four, yeah, four. the four, 400 k so mark. Yeah, so it's like yeah. where you can get to in a day, you know. So that's yes. um, often what we look at is, you know, looking at that, where's that customer that we want and access, you know, when access becomes an issue, you need to then look, okay, I've got that that day trip to market that might be, you know, they might be willing to drive an hour and a half, two hours to come for a day at the most. Um, so then, you know, to come for a stay, they will be able to, to get to somewhere that they can drive to within a day. So four to yes. five hours is usually the limit that people are willing to drive to for that day. So we nickname it the 400 kilometre radius. So, you know, we're very good, you know, old fashioned maps. You know, I know, you, you know, Spina, you girls will use your Google maps and everything. You know, I actually have <laughs> physical maps of everywhere, you know, in Australia and actually around the world in my office. Um, and I get them out and I practically do, you know, the circle around to see, okay, if I'm going to attract that market this is the story i need to give them how to get there so i work with that first process of um you know if they're driving within four hours even what you know sharing some um information with them about where they can stop on the way for a cup of coffee you know things like even i learned over the years with um the drive market was very important was that the cleanest toilets in australia um i think i could just about write a book about that now but <laughs> just little fun quirky things that you know stop here for your coffee the got great toilets do um and uh and you know that could even be for instance you know i've suggested Bundaberg rum in the past you know going for a quick mm. little nip not too much you still got to drive but they've got great toilets so just bringing in that whole story of whatever that distance is however they're traveling so if it's if it is the drive bring in the story of the drive if it's going to be that they've got to stop and overnight somewhere on that way so when we go out that little bit further of that market that we're looking for then do the solution for them and actually suggest this is you know this is your journey this is a great place to stop on the way with our favorites and then it's only a quick, you know, three hours the next morning and you're here with us to check in and have a fabulous time or do this experience or whatever. So making the solution base is what we've been doing a lot of work with. Karen and I have done a lot of work with that and I have been working with a lot of my clients about the first stage of looking at our current customer profiles of the customer who can come now, who that customer is, where they are at home, what they do at home, um, so that we can think about how we can get to them cost effectively. So uh, obviously doing the digital type of things that we're doing, but I've been looking then at what else can we do other than digital? So um, for instance, the golf you know, market, um, the pent-up golfer who, you know, from Queensland ideally would often trips around different parts of Australia or even overseas to take clubs with them on holiday. They can't get anywhere. So, you know, putting together some components that, that work with that market and then find the database of where those golfers are, their memberships and things like that. So there's some of the things that I've been working on with, you know, clients to do that type of thing. One client actually did that with a database that I have that um, you know, is over 50,000 people on the database that are actually golfers. They That's their life. That's what they love. They're predominantly Queensland on that database. And within a couple of days, they've got 80 bookings um, straight away from the promotion we did, you know, with that. So we're looking at different ways of duplicating those type of things for some other operators as well. Another client is couples only. And uh, and so, you know, she's got to attract that couples market and, and hasn't you know, really done a lot of that um, just Queensland. A lot of her business has been from Sydney and Melbourne in the past and New Zealand. And so we've actually got um, connected her with some nice uh, weekend and, and three or four night stay packages and connecting her with the fashion industry in Brisbane. We've got over 100,000 on that database with the collective of fashion designers that their network and they have resort wear. So it's 
connecting out to them and giving them package options and things. And again, as Karen mentioned, prize options, but then exclusive deals that go hidden underground prices that nobody else sees. They're not out there, um, you know, the trade um, that agents can't see it and then get upset about rate parity. Um, they, it's not seen that it downgrades the price of our product in the public sphere. But if we've got holes for our accommodation or our tours, we can work with that in a what I call that underground way that it's not seen um, to the public view. So we can, you know, I'm not a discounter. I don't like discounting, but I prefer value adding. But if we do have to discount because there is some massive holes for some people, then we can do it in a way that's not um, downgrading our product by looking at those counters. And for people who are coming that aren't paying a discount, they're not seeing that that's available. So they're the type of things that we're looking at is, um, really those customer profiles and identifying what that customer is doing at their home base to be able to go straight to them and communicate with a with a package that is actually showing them we know what they want and we're providing the solutions for them. A lot of the thing at the moment, and, and Karen and I have had some very deep conversations about this from the Gold Coast point of view, and we did it in some of our other pre-webinar series as well, is the actual customer expectation when they arrive currently in destinations. And this is the same across the whole of Australia. We might be open for business for people to come and stay, but there is not necessarily everything else open or running at the same capacity or being able to offer the same experience or to be able to offer as many tours in a day. Uh, the fact that people need to book in advance for things that they've never had to worry about booking before a table at their favourite restaurant. I've already warned my sister-in-law who's booked Noosa. As soon as Canberra, you know, opened again, she was booked in uh, for Noosa for her very, very lovely um, holiday house that she, you know, has booked. Um, and they have done that previously. They always go overseas skiing after Christmas, but they're going to Noosa this year. And I have already said to her, you've got some favourite restaurants up there, babe. You better book them now because, mm. you know, they're, they're not going to have the capacity um, to do that. They may have set menus. So making sure wherever possible for those of us who are communicating with our guests before they arrive um, at mm. our accommodation or in our destination to not be hiding the fact that things have changed. Be open and honest but provide them with solutions. So letting them know, this is my favourite, you know, restaurant that we um, always go to, you know, ourselves. Now, that might not be next door to our property like it used to be. And it doesn't matter that it wasn't previously our favourite. But we know now that it's open, it's consistent with its service, and we can book it beforehand. And making sure that we're, we're giving that information. I think they're the sort of things that are really important from offering that guest experience before they come making sure that then when they're there, we're touch pointing with them on just, you know, are you aware of this? Have you booked this? And and just doing all of those type of things um, will help will help that expectation when they arrive. And it also, as I've said to my clients, it shows if you're doing that on your website, on your um, confirmation emails, on your Facebook and socials, you're showing that you're the local expert and they trust you. And it's something that through this journey we've realised is such a big part. They want to, the, the expectation that you're clean and COVID safe is now a given. They expect mm. Mm. not being special. That's just the expected. Um, so when you then provide solutions to make their holiday the best it can be, that's then what they are really looking for and they want to trust you to do that. That is, uh, that's spot on. Uh, and I, there, there's so many key takeaways from that, that, you know, focusing on niches like the golf market, like looking at what what is around you that your business can complement and tapping into those databases and eyeballs that are niche and specific. So that was an excellent example. I love what you've shared and I think we're very, you know, we work well together because we're, we're very aligned in our thinking that this shows ambassadorship for your region and for your destination. 
But now, I mean, I love this, the 400 kilometer rule um, that it also, you can extend that to interregional opportunities and collaborations. So beyond your region, if you kind of with this mindset in mind that not only walking in the customer's shoes, walk in the customer's shoes from their house to you. I love that. Who are they? Where's their home base and where are they coming from? And if they can't fly to you, they can't ride a bike to you, or they can't, you know, well, maybe cycling well, tours is, is, is a really good thing. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, if, like share with them what's the best, what, what's another experience that you could give them that c- they could enjoy along the journey. I, I really love that. Uh, thank you, Julie, for your comments. Such a great point, Amanda, on operators considering the 400-kilometre radius drive market and the journey their customers will take and what they can recommend to do along the way. And, again, for anybody that's listening that you can think, how would this apply to my business? I, what, what Amanda and Karen are sharing, I like to call smart collaborations, that even if you can't get out of your, you, you know, you can't get beyond for five kilometers if anyone's listening tuning in from victoria you can create these collaborations o- over a phone or a text or even a ping on on facebook to be able to to create some you know leverage leverage opportunities together so that, that's some excellent insights I now just Amanda, to you, Dana, just to say yes, that yeah um, which i think is really important in just what you just said is that we, as much as borders are such a topic of conversation at the moment, um, customers before this didn't really think about borders as much. Um, So I think that, you know, as much as we're completely fine-tuned now to borders, and our customers are too, once all that, you know, dissipates a bit, the customers don't think about that. They just do think about that journey, you know, from where they are. And so, yes, we've been very, all of us in our own states, very focused on that. But once that changes, it is that then looking at that collaboration right the way through. And and that's where you can then talk to operators who could be from, you know, for us in Queensland, I've said to some of my clients, start communicating and making friends now with operators in Byron Bay, um, in Port Macquarie, you know, because they are going to be coming out of Sydney and they're going to drive that coast. So again, do the old fashioned link in with the people along the way, but not only just the accommodation places, but ask them from you to Byron, do you know any good places for ice cream? You know, like if it's the family market that you're approaching, you know, things like that. So that again, you've got that intel and hopefully that um, operator in Port Macquarie will actually go, oh, we'll do the same on our website to you. You know, we'll we'll do the same type of thing. So, you know, my motto is always partner or perish. You know, get out there and and do what you were saying before, that collaboration. It's um it's just yeah really important and try and break down those borders now that we hopefully can do more of that. Oh, that's right. Someone put it, a colleague put it perfectly the other day. So we're going to have a sugar rush when this is all kind of opens up, but it's now about being sustainable. We're going to get the hit, but then having sustainability a- a- after that. And it's, yeah. it's, it just, you know, it's, it's good old fashioned business practice 101, tourism or otherwise. I love that partner or parish, the three R's that highlights everything, relationships, relationships, relationships uh, from all across with our customers, with our, with our suppliers, with our partners, with our destination friends, like really making sure that we're nurturing these relationships through, through, through this time. Amanda, in your and did you have anything else to add to that, Karen? I think before we uh, before was there anything uh, that you wanted to add to that for yourself in your partnerships? Have you discovered some new partnerships al- along the journey or packaging opportunities? Um, I am in the process of discovering a few packaging opportunities and expanding it um, with. Uh, products that I would not normally um, be involved in, but it's super important to do this. And I'm just going back to itineraries and that self-drive market as the flights start slowly but surely coming over and maybe the borders open. I am also preparing to put um, new itineraries in coming up from Victoria and from New South Wales with stop-offs and ideas as well. So that will all sit on a page on the back of my website and will be posted through social media sites as well for dreaming and planning purposes. 
dreaming and planning purposes. I'm mm-hmm. in Melbourne. I'm dreaming and planning every day. <laughs> I was, the team, and so is Hannah from behind the scene. The team, like, oh, I'm going out for dinner with girlfriends. And, you know, I found myself like, oh, I miss that. <laughs> Can't wait even just a simple thing of, um, of heading out. But the dreaming and planning phase, this is it. I mean, this is the market. You've got people that are very much in dreaming and planning mode. Uh, as we start to wrap up, was there anything that you'd like to share, Karen, in in anyone that's listening that is in this, at the beginning of this phase that they really need to start exploring new markets, new products, experiences, and even their digital presence? Yes. Well, I would say my takeaways are um, don't wait um, and keep putting off your learning. Get involved just make a decision and say okay i'm going to move forward i've got to grow and develop i am 58 years old and i have had a lot of learning but you know what i am changing every day i'm having to reopen my mind to new digital areas to understand them and i'm not going to be perfect at it but i am going to potentially if i don't know it all i'm going to work with a team that does or hire or someone that can i I love my one-on-one mentoring Um, one of the best things to do is do reach out. I mean, I'm, let's say we're talking to people in Queensland and all across Australia probably, and I know everyone's been in lockdown. So reach out. Call call me at the Dorchester. I'll put you in contact with someone. Um, reach out to um, Amanda and the Navi team and the Tourism Tribe team. There's amazing people around to help you and take you forward and to encourage you along the way. You're not going to get it all right immediately. My journey is taking me two or three years already just to look at the website that you're going to see if you go onto my website or any of my social media sites that are firing up. It's the first time I've ever put advertising in place starting this past week. We're going to drive three months worth of advertising through. I'm a little scared. I've never done this before, but I'm going to do it. And I'm working with experts that are going to help me get this done. Um, Along the journey, be kind to yourself, okay? We've, it has been rough, and especially for everyone in the South, it's been rougher. Um, and when it changes, you're going to have people arriving that have also gone through a tough time, and you're going to be serving them. Be kind to yourself, but also be kind to them because they were going to be in all kinds of um, different states of arrival and excitement to be out and about again. And finally, as Liz always tells me, one of my best friends, Liz Ward, lovely, lovely mentor <laughs> as well. Um, just breathe, Karen. Breathe. Just breathe and keep moving forward slowly but surely. But I'm most appreciative of the one-on-one mentoring and these training programs. They really have um, genocized me to another level. Yeah, I give a big love heart for you know if you if you just like because we there's just so much goodness in what you've shared, Karen. Thank you so much. But a key takeaway is to keep learning for all of us. Every, I mean, there's there's you know there's no such thing. This is a constant working progress. There's no such thing as security anymore anywhere. Whether you're a business or an employee of of a business, we need to always keep learning and growing. And I love that. And if you don't know, work with someone that does or hire someone who can. I think that's a that's a an excellent point in business to keep evolving. So good. How about you, Amanda? Is there anything, any parting ad- advice uh, that you'd like to share with people that are on this journey at the moment and how they can even access, for the, our Queensland fran- friends, how they can access a little bit more of the program that's available? Yes, certainly. So, well, from that point, to be able to, for Queensland tourism operators, events, Uh, cafes, restaurants, transport providers, um, really anyone that's servicing the the tourism industry has the opportunity to sign up to the free coaching sessions that are provided by QTIC and they are funded by the Queensland Government um, and facilitated through the QTIC program. So I think Hannah's going to put that link up um, for people to be able to see. So you can apply to do that and you get four one-hour sessions um, with your preferred um, coach supplier and success matrix 
is in collaboration with Tourism Tribe and Krista Heritz Marketing for um, one of the suites of coaching programs in that. So uh, it's a wonderful program to have access to that's not costing you any money and it's completely tailor-made to whatever your needs are at the time, whether that is product development, um, experience, uh, pivoting to different markets, trade distribution, online engagement. Um, so it really can be whatever it is that you need for your COVID rebound um, recovery. So that's that program. And a lot of people in that program, what we are focusing on too, is just that really pulling together like what Karen has done, a very um, succinct uh, market action plan on the key priorities of what that is to move forward. So identifying, you know, those new customers and then the ways that we can actually do that. And also the, the distribution system. So there's many tourism operators that um, have been very heavily involved with uh, part of their distribution has been the trade engagement. And that's either been wholesale domestic trade here in Australia or it has been inbound and international through inbound operators or wholesale internationally. And so part of the program as well for those people is realigning those relationships and working through how uh, for a lot of them they haven't been so actively engaged in that domestic side of things with those relationships. And even more importantly, what we're doing at the moment is looking at the alignment to the retail travel agent who is hurting so much in Australia and going directly with them for promotions and re-education about um, what there is to sell in Australia because they have been very focused on the cruise market internationally and the international travel. That market has um, a huge amount of Australians on their database that typically travel overseas. So we're, you know, certainly working and aligning very heavily with the retail agents here to be able to understand what their customer might want to do in Australia now and how we can best provide that um, to them and, and working directly those relationships and researching and understanding that knowledge. So again, those different partnerships that are still part of that network, but they're not typically the ones in the past that we have so um, connected to, you know, in that yes. way different part of the food chain that hasn't been as focused and now they too are having to completely shift in a different way so um, that's just another side of of the journey and the marketing strategy that needs to be considered for for many people absolutely and that's a key point too because I think from I mean from a trade relationships we go back to partnerships not not forgetting that communication i think that's an important note for any operator that's listening that we have our consumer segments in an email database but not forgetting to send that communication to your to your partners that are distributing your, your product about where you're at and where the journey is for that support and vice versa. We actually have a retail agent that's going to join us on the show next week, which I'm really excited about just to explore that. And that's been exciting because it's someone that we've gotten to know but then suddenly found himself amongst all this Australian product where his core product has been overseas. So there's, there, there is, I think you've nailed that there, that even looking after our, our, other, our distributors from that side of, of the spectrum That's in right. our communication. They don't have the product, they can't sell it. So, you know, we, no, we exactly. the game actually supply it. And they may still choose to want to buy that through a wholesale partnership or they may choose depending on the value of it and how much, you know, they feel it's worthy of their custom that they can do it as an exclusive direct to their to their database and then direct to you. So they will all have different ways of handling that. But again, um, not disrespecting the fact that they are at a bit of a loss of knowing Australia um, because that's not had to be their business, you know. So I found some of just, they've got, I can't believe they know nothing. And it's like, well, that's okay. That's fine. So we can be ahead of the game and be the ones educating them about our patch in which case then they'll feel confident in selling that and and so we'll get the benefit, you know, of oh, that. Oh, so, that's right. 
That's right. Yeah. And it's all, this is all the opportunities that exists with us, you know, with all, and I love that we've talked a lot about the found, good foundational marketing that can be all, and, and the journeys that clients have been going through, it's kind of coming in and doing that foundational piece with Amanda and then coming, okay, how can we ignite this now from a digital perspective yeah. where how can we translate this same message, this same market and, re, you know, create new channels and new ways to to attract some direct business to, to our businesses and the way that we communicate. Well, that is bringing us to the end. If there was any other aha uh, moments, thank you to everyone for your comments. We've got here packages. What a beautiful wrap up from Karen. This is why we absolutely love you and and Amanda and partners or perish. This is so true. Um, Emily, uh, partners or perish. I love that one too. Thank you. Unfortunately, that comes up as Facebook user, but thank you, um, our facey friend. And Emily's said packages are a great way to connect businesses and like-minded people. So it's amazing to see everyone supporting each other during these turbulent times. And that's what this is about. It is stronger together. I think now even our own mindset in, you know, we're booking like your sister, she always books her ski holidays and goes overseas. But now it's like being more conscious of the spend that you know it's going to support a local Aussie business. I think there is also a responsibility on all of us. <laughs> Sorry? I said you can't also get anywhere else. <laughs> well, this is this is true. This is true. But certainly making some different different exactly. Yeah, we can we can kind of think ourselves in educating ourselves in what what That's else right. uh, what else can we do and see and experience. Now, the best way to find and learn more about you, Amanda, would that be your website, successmatrix.com.au, if you want to find out more about Amanda. And if you'd like to find out more about Karen, we've got, so there's Success Matrix up there on, and we've got Karen, you're the dorchester.com.au to find more and book your next holiday on the Gold Coast. So oh, thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bring on Sorry. that. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, oh, you'll be, me. oh, that's lovely. I that's nice. Down there next week. Oh, so lucky. You can't join us to spend it yet, but hopefully uh, not long. <laughs> hopefully not long, that's for sure. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time, your insights that you've so wonderfully and beautifully shared with us. We really appreciate you. I look forward to your seeing your successes both at Success Matrix and at the Do Dorchester. Thank you to everyone that's uh, listening and tuning in live and watching the replay. Please keep continuing the conversation. We'll get the pings if there's anything that through what's been shared. We'd love to keep the conversation going. And uh, tune in, same time, same place, next week, Friday at 10 o'clock. We'll have another wonderful guest to share some more insights. So we learn together, we grow, grow, we grow together, we thrive together. And if you haven't joined the Tourism Thrive Challenge, check out our group at Support Tourism help support tourism support tourism business help uh, facebook group and we've had a tourism thrive challenge and we're on the 25th day um but you can go back there's some great stuff in there if you want to kind of take that there we go tourism help tourism help that's it there we go thank you hannah uh the group name is different and i got all confused but it's tourism help but there's some great if you go back on those threads you'll see some great ways that you you know just little tips like your google my business uh we had yesterday is your website accessible is it you know can it be readily can it be read on easily on a screen reader for example or can you click on your phone number so things like that that you might want to go if you want to go through an easy checklist list um, uh, to keep your business thriving uh, check out tourism help facebook group okay until next time uh thank you for joining the digital discovery show and we'll see you next week bye guys thank you bye bye, bye.